Praise the Lord, everyone. We invite you to this service of New Vision United Pentecostal Church this morning. It is good to be together where we can worship the Lord in song, in praise, in prayer. Right. I want to just go back to such a familiar scripture. It is Psalms 150. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, what a commandment to God's people. Right. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent yes. greatness. Right. I think this morning we should understand that we serve a great God in the midst of everything that we think is right. crucial and important. Right. We serve a great God that is in control. And I want to invite you today, whether you're in this congregation or whether you're at home in your kitchen or your living room or your den or wherever you may be watching from, I want to encourage all of us to worship Him and understand His greatness and give Him the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. our neighbors, our families, our community, our church needs to be in a time of prayer. Yes. It is right now where yes. we put our God, which is all powerful, and make sure that we keep our priorities following after him. He is a great God. He is in control, and I trust him today. Amen. I would first like to just ask us as we go to the Lord in prayer to remember our country. Uh, my wife and I were, were just talking about 
some particular leaders within our country this morning that start each of their days with prayer and, and step through the different offices of their government buildings and pray for the individuals and, and that God would lead them and guide them. It's amazing how much better that particular state is doing. <laughs> Not amazing. God is God. Amen. When you put him first, he's going to take care of you. We want to remember everyone that is sick this morning. The young bloods have some sickness within their family. Sister Sue this morning, let's remember her. Uh, unspoken request just by the uplifting of your hand all across this building. Amen. Let's remember these that God will move in a mighty way that his direction will be in our lives, that the church will continue to be great. Amen. Right. Uh, I want to give special testimony to uh, Brother and Sister White that God has touched and yes. they're doing well. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right. Amen. God Hallelujah. is faithful. Hallelujah. Let's go to him right now in prayer. Oh, yeah. Let's lift our hearts, yeah. our hands if you feel like it. Oh, and let's take these requests before the Lord Jesus in your name. Lord, we love you. We believe you. We trust you right now. We ask God for your hand in everything that we do. In our country, in our leaders, Lord, in our government. God, we ask, Lord, for your direction in our lives. That, Lord, you would not allow fear to come, but you would allow the peace and the presence and the understanding, Lord. Oh, that you are a mighty God, Lord, and we can trust you. Touch these, Lord, that are not with us this morning. Heal their bodies and lift them up, Lord. Let there be a great witness for you. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. God, we thank you for what you're about to do as we place our burdens and our concerns and our requests and our prayers, God, on the altar and we leave them there. You are a great God. You are a Hallelujah. We trust you. Oh, Lord, move into living rooms right now. Move into kitchens right now. God, move into dens right now as the, those are sitting around uh, watching the stream of the service. Let your spirit fill their house with peace. Let your spirit fill their house with healing, both for their bodies and for their minds and for their souls. God, move in a mighty way and we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise. We will trust you in Jesus' name. Could we worship him right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you and we exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated. That's permissive.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. <laughs> you Jesus I worship you Jesus I praise your lovely name Lord I praise your lovely name hallelujah 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 oh Jesus you are wonderful Lord you are worthy mm. what a mighty presence of the Holy Ghost is in this place today Lord I feel his strength I feel his anointing in this house I feel his presence, Lord, in this place. I love you, God. I love you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All I want to do is worship him. All I want to do is glorify him. Oh, God, you are worthy, Jesus. Would you raise your hands right now? God, speak into my heart, God. Speak into my mind, Lord. I'm here for you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Jesus, I praise your name, Lord. Jesus, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Sister G is going to be coming around to receive our offering today. Would you give as the Lord has blessed you as... If you are here, if you are watching live stream and would like to give, you can go to our website, our web page, or you can go to our Facebook page and it'll give you directions on how to give through our PayPal account. Uh, God is blessing. God is doing some great things. And I thank you for your faithfulness in giving to the house of God. God will continue to bless. God will continue to touch. Let me remind you of a few things going on. We are having services on Sunday here at the church. And uh, we, uh, we are practicing our, our social distancing and, and uh, uh, doing the best we can to, to make sure it's a, a safe and uh, clean environment for each and every person that comes here. If you are feeling sick, we do ask for you to, to uh, uh, join us on our live stream. We have our live stream that goes on for uh, our services on Sundays that is for each and every person that cannot make it because they're either sick or they are a high risk uh, uh, to contract this virus. If you've come in contact with somebody who is uh, tested positive for it, we ask for you to join us on our live stream service. We also have masks here. If you come to the church and you want to join us in service, uh, and uh, feel more comfortable in a mask, you can uh, put on a mask, but they are not required in our services. We also have our Bible study on Wednesday nights, and God is moving in our Bible studies. We post that to our YouTube page, and we will give links to that in our Facebook page 
uh, from time to time. And we are delving into the Word of God. Exciting things are happening in our Bible study. And then we have prayer meeting on Thursday nights. And God is in this place. And I'm excited about what God is doing. God is doing some great work at New Vision. And I believe He's going to do some even greater things as we reach out to those people that are hurting and those people that are hungry. And God is going to move and the Holy Ghost is going to fall. Come expecting it wherever you go, expecting God to use you have for His service. And I believe God's going to do some great things. I believe He's going to do some great things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, God is good all the time. He's good all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated today. I'm going to do things just a little bit different in my reading today. Uh, you can remain seated for my reading. But I'm going to uh, start just a little bit different today. And then we'll get into the reading of the Word of God today. Uh, I'm thankful for each and every person that is here in this place. And I believe that God is speaking to us in these days in the midst of everything that is going on, God is still moving. He is still on the throne. He has never uh, stepped down from that, but he is still in control of everything that's going on. He, uh, uh, we may not know why or who or what is going on, but God does. And he is in control and he is... Uh, he has uh, got control of our lives each yes. and every day. And I'm right. thankful for that. The story is told of a soldier sitting outside of the White House one day. He was crying uncontrollably. And a little boy saw him weeping and asked, Sir, what's wrong? What's happening? And the soldier replied, I was hoping I could see President Lincoln We've got this devastating situation that is taking place, and only the president can intervene and save the lives of my men. But they won't let me in. They won't let me into the White House to see him. I'm not allowed to go through those doors. And the little boy took the soldier's hand and said, come with me. And they then proceeded to walk past the sentry at the gate straight into the White House and past the guards and then walked right into the president's office and the little boy then said these words he said dad this is the soldier this is a soldier that needs to talk with you I don't know who you are I don't know where you've come from I don't know your background I don't know who is who is watching live stream and who is not I'll, I'll find out a little later on but uh, right now, I do know that I want to uh, come to you and I want you to come with me as I take you to the Father. The Father who can answer the questions that you may have. The Father who can answer those uh, questions to the troubles and trials. Let me take your hand because you may not be able to figure out how to get past those guards and how past those gates uh, uh, to him. But I can tell you that I can take you to the Father and he has the answer to whatever it is you need and whatever it is you're faced with. I wish I knew all the answers to the questions that may be on your mind. I wish I could give you the the uh, answers to every struggle, every trial, every tribulation that comes your way. I, I wish I could give you the answer that would help you out of maybe the pit that you have found yourself in, that you have maybe walked into on your own, or you have fallen into through some situation that has happened in your life. Why is this happening in our world? Why is this happening in our lives? Why are we seeing this apparent and blatant attack on some of our freedoms that we might uh, hold so dear? Why are so many people being affected by a virus that we have no idea uh, why it is uh, there in this place? I don't know all the answers to everything that is going on, but I do know the God that knows uh, the answers to those. Yes. Yes. He knew 
He knew it would happen before the first person even thought it in their mind. He knew what was about to take place. He knew who would be here during this time and who would, who, what the church would look like at this time. And I have preached it for years and will continue to preach the awesome truth that God is sovereign. He never gave it up. And if it happens, it's because he allowed it or he caused it. Uh, I don't know which uh, it was, but I know that I, I know a father who has the answers to everything yes, I may yes. face. Right. Amen. Yes. Right. He either causes something or some event to take place or he allows it to take place. Right. It is not to destroy, but right. it is to show us and help us and build us stronger. Right. I don't know why. And from time to time, I wonder myself why certain situations happen in even my life. Uh, and I don't know what the circumstance is that causes that, but I know uh, that when I walk into that hospital room, uh, that when I walked into that hospital, uh, that time when I became, uh, uh, found out that I had that that uh, uh, tumor on my uh, brain, I, I realized uh, uh, that it, I didn't know the answer or how it was going to work out, but I didn't have to uh, because I knew the father that I could go to uh, who had every answer that I needed. Uh, every struggle that I went through, he already had it worked out. Uh, and when I don't know how to get to through this situation, he does. Yes. Yes, he, does. Amen. he knows the answer to my dilemma. He knows the answer to my problem. He knows the answer to my mistake. Uh, it does not matter if I can figure it out or not. Uh, I have access to the one who does have the answer. And his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, and he has come into our lives. And he is waiting right there for you to take his hand and say, Lead me, Lord, I'll follow. Lead me, Lord, I'll go in your direction. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Job tells us an interesting story. It reads of a man starts out very quickly in the very first uh, chapter uh, and that is where I'm going to lead in our text this morning uh, Job chapter 1 and uh, beginning with verse number 1 it says there was a man in the land of us uh, whose name was Job uh, right. and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God uh, and eschewed evil uh, and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters uh, and his substance was all also, also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and, and a very great household and show that this man was the greatest of all the men uh, of the east. Uh, uh, it goes on in verse 6 and it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Uh, they had to come. Uh, they had to come in and talk to God. God. Uh, they had to come in and find out what they needed to do or what was taking place or report what was happening. And, and even Satan, the Bible says, came also among them. Uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, Where whence comest thou? Uh, then Satan answered the Lord and said, uh, From going to and fro in the earth uh, and from walking up and down in it. Uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Uh, I noticed uh, in your scripture you've probably seen it time and time again I've preached on it uh, but God points out Job uh, Satan didn't say hey I saw Job walking there uh, uh, God says have you considered Job uh, have you looked at Job uh, have you seen this man that is there uh, that I've placed there on the earth uh, that I've put there uh, that uh, there is none like him God says uh, in the earth uh, a perfect and upright man uh, one that is feareth God and escheweth evil. Huh? And Satan answered the Lord and said doth Job fear God for naught? Uh, hast not thou made an hedge about him huh? and about his house uh, and about all that he hath on, on every side? Huh? God doesn't deny it. Uh, God doesn't say no I haven't. Uh, he confirms it. Uh, I, I have. Uh, I know it's there. Uh, I've placed it around him. Uh, I, 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 but it's not. Uh, he 
he's not serving me because of that. Uh, he's serving me because uh, he knows uh, that I know the way that he takes. Uh, right. I know the steps that he's right. going to take. Uh, I guide him and I lead him. Uh, and I, he knows that I will lead him in the right direction. Right. That's right. No matter what's going on. Hast not thou made a hedge around him? Satan asks. And so God begins to talk to him and says, Put forth thine hand now. Touch all that he hath. And he will, cur uh, he will curse thee. Uh, Satan asked, uh, uh, says that. He says, I, I, he'll curse thee if you just let him, uh, uh, let him go and let me do whatever I want to do. And so the Lord said uh, to him in reply, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. And so Satan immediately went forth uh, and from the presence of the Lord uh, and automatically began to work. Uh, that chapter goes on to read uh, that there came a day uh, in which a messenger came unto Job uh, and said the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them uh, and the Sabians fell uh, upon them uh, and took them away uh, and they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword uh, and I only escaped alone to tell thee and while he was speaking someone else came and said the fire of God is fallen from heaven and have burned up the sheep and the servant and the and consumed them and I only have escaped and while he was still finishing his sentence another one came and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away and they, they've slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only have escaped and just when Job was thinking it couldn't get any worse uh, another one came in uh, and while that uh, first one was speaking uh, and he says uh, uh, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and were drinking uh, they were there uh, just to have, enjoying a good meal uh, and there came a great wind from the wilderness uh, and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men uh, and they are dead devastating news for a man it's bad enough seeing those things that have opened up and those things that have that have happened in your life but it's another thing to understand that God is in control completely yes. right. and if God allowed it to happen there was a reason for it and I can still do what Job did he set the example he gave us an example of what we needed to do the Bible says Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He didn't go to God and say, why did you do this? He began to worship God. He said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right. In all this, the Bible says, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. If you continue to read in the book of Job, you find time uh, and time again where those are, that were so-called friends would come to Job and they would tell him, you might as well quit, you might as well stop. But God, the Bible says Job never did charge God. Uh, he never did charge uh, uh, God foolishly. He didn't sin. He didn't, he didn't turn around and say, I've got to walk away because I don't understand it. Uh, he didn't say, I'm quitting. Uh, he said, I'm going uh, to allow God to do what what he wants to do in my life uh, and I'm going to rejoice uh, I'm going to magnify him uh, I'm going to worship him uh, when it looks like it's all coming to an end uh, I'm going to worship him uh, when it looks like it's all falling apart I'm going to worship him uh, it's time that the church rise up and say I don't care what's going on in my life uh, or in my world uh, I'm going to magnify God uh, I'm going to rejoice I'm going to glorify him uh, would you do that right now in this place Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing, uh, both good and bad. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for everything you're allowing, God. Uh, oh, Jesus, uh, I thank you, Lord, for your power and your presence in my life, oh, God. You're mighty, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, rejoice in the Lord right now for a moment. Uh, take a second right now and thank Him. Uh, oh, God, it may be all going up, falling apart in your 
your life. But go ahead and thank him. Lord, you have control in my life. You know what's going to happen. And you've got my hand, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, God. There are times in our life where we don't know which way to go. We don't know what's happening here or what's happening there. And, uh, and we can rest assured that God does. There's times, though, that we must find a father who can guide us and lead us. Uh, who can show us uh, how to how to walk in his direction show us uh, who has the answers to every situation we face the writers in the old testament were adamant that he was coming huh? he was going to be there he would guide them and he would lead them huh? he'd show them even after they slipped here and slipped there after they not uh, didn't just slip but they deliberately turned and walked in another direction huh? because they thought they had the answers or they thought they could do better in this way or that way well the grass looked greener on the other side of the fence and so they tried to get over that uh, even after those times God still began to put out his blessings, uh, began to touch them and began to lead them uh, began to give them an opportunity to come back to him, uh, come back and walk with him uh, he began to promise them, I know uh, that you're uh, going through this but I've got a promise for you uh, and I'm going to give you that uh, you're going to walk in the direction I want you to walk, you'll see uh, what I've got for you uh, you'll see an answer when you don't know the answer to your problems they promised it they spoke of it time and time again the prophets would begin to proclaim the uh, avid scripture we we like to use during the Christmas season is one that actually uh, holds true doesn't matter when it is uh, time of the year but Isaiah began to write for unto us a child is born uh, unto us a son is given uh, and the government shall be on his shoulder uh, and his name shall be called wonderful uh, his name shall be called counselor uh, he shall be the mighty God uh, the everlasting father Isaiah began to talk about this one that is coming who will be the everlasting father. The prince of peace. When you're struggling and you're disturbed, he's that prince of peace. When the doctors give you a report, you don't know which way it's going to go. He's the prince of peace. He's the everlasting father, the one who knows every situation you're going through. And he is coming. He is coming. And then when you go into the New Testament, you find uh, where they begin to talk uh, and they begin to show as a man begins to be born. Uh, 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 he begins to come onto this earth. Uh, this man, Christ Jesus, uh, who comes in uh, and touches, uh, who moves, uh, who strengthens, uh, who heals the sick, uh, opens the blinded eyes, uh, opens doors uh, in places where there, uh, there are no doors. He makes a way. Uh, he touches people people everywhere he goes and he speaks time and time again about I and my father are one we see this child that is born as Isaiah begins to speak we see that person he is the father he is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He is the one who opened the doors. For in him, uh, uh, Paul writes to the Colossians, for by him were all things created uh, that are in heaven and that are in earth, uh, visible and invisible. Those situations, I don't know how the end is going to result in. Uh, he created those things. Uh, those troubled times in my life, uh, he allowed those things to happen, uh, uh, to show me and to build me and to make me stronger. Uh, uh, whether they be thrones or dominions uh, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. But he didn't just talk about how he created all those things or he allowed those things and they were for him. He began to understand that he is the head of the body the church 
who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, uh, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Uh, for it pleased the Father uh, that in him should all the fullness dwell. Uh, and having made peace through the blood uh, of the cross, uh, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Uh, by him I say, uh, whether they be the things in earth uh, or things in heaven. Uh, and you that were sometime alienated... Uh, and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled. I tell you today, I'm thankful that today I don't have to worry about not being able to wash away those sins. He made a way. He made a way of escape. That father who we needed whenever we couldn't find a way out of it. Jesus Christ is his name. And he came to set us free. I'm thankful today he did that. Times we go through trials and situations in which we have to just learn to trust in the Father. He knows what is going to happen. He knows what's going to take place. We live in a world, though, that just gets bent out of shape whenever it comes to finding a time when they've just got to trust in the person to lead them and to show them where to go and show them what needs to happen. Uh, it's hard for them to understand. It's hard for us to understand huh, that God has already been there. He's already gone through that. He already knows the answer. He already has figured it out. It doesn't have to be something that is uh, uh, foreign to him. Huh? He already knows it. Huh? He made it huh, so that we might grow and we might learn. Huh? And he allowed it before so we might understand huh, that he has everything in control. It was all made for Him. It was all made that we might worship Him. We might be free from the bondage of sin that is in this world. When we died out to Him and we allowed ourselves to be what God wanted us to be. Paul says, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your body by wicked works. The sin that was in your life. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh uh, through death uh, to present you holy uh, and unblameable uh, and unreprovable uh, in his sight. Uh, if ye continue in the faith, uh, grounded and settled, uh, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel uh, which ye have heard, uh, heard uh, and which ye was preached to every creature which is under heaven, uh, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, uh, who now I'll rejoice in my sufferings even though I go through some things for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions. Christ in, uh, in my flesh uh, for his body's sake uh, which is which is the church uh, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation uh, of God uh, which is given to me for you uh, to fulfill the word of God. Even the ministry which hath been hid from the ages and from the generations, but it's no longer hid. See, that was the problem. They still insisted it's still hidden. There's still some today that insist it's still hidden. We don't know who it is. We don't know how it's taken place. We don't know how it's all working, how it's gonna work out. Can I tell you, I know a father who does, and his name is Jesus Christ. Would you raise your hands right now in this place and would you begin to love the Lord? Would you thank Him? Because it wasn't just something that was spoke about. It's not still something that just, was just spoken about. But He's actually come into this place. And when you and I walk into this house and we begin to raise our hands and magnify Him, huh? when we get, begin to worship Him, huh? He begins to flood this place, huh? flood that home, huh? flood that den, huh? flood that place wherever you might be right now. Huh? He, will, he will flood that place with His presence. Huh? And you will find that if you don't know the answer, uh, Job found, uh, when I worship him, uh, when I worship him, he knows the way that I take. Uh, he knows the situations that I'm faced with. He knows the struggle. Yes, he does. He, does. he created me. 
for his purpose. He talks in the Old Testament, the Lord speaks to his people. He says, he says, you're mine, I created you. You're mine, you, you were made for my purpose. You were made for me, that's why you're here. And so why would he destroy you? Oh, why would he try to kill you off? He wants freedom for each and every person. Sin has tried, kept in, crept into our lives uh, and tried to destroy us. Uh, and unless we surrender to God, unless we allow Him to work in our life, uh, and in which He came and died on a cross that we might free, uh, unless we repent of those sins, uh, oh, that stain will forever be in our life. Uh, unless we're baptized in the name, uh, the only saving name, uh, that name of Jesus. Uh, if unless we're baptized in that name, uh, that sin will ever remain there. But once we are young, you repented, once we've been baptized, he said, I'll sin. I won't just leave you alone. I'll take those sins away. And when those sins are removed, I'll be able to come in and dwell in your life. And dwell in your heart. You want to know why a world is struggling and can't figure it out? Because God can't dwell inside of their life. With the sin that has crept into this world. God wants to take and reach those people, each and every person. And he wants to reach us in this place. And if you're here today and you have the Holy Ghost, then you can stand to your feet and you can rejoice. Because God has given me a way of escape. My Father, I can take them. I can take their hand when they're searching. And I can lead them through the gate. I don't have to stand at the back of the gate or behind the gate and held back from what God wants from me. I can go straight in to see the Father. And as that little boy took that soldier's hand and said, Come with me. That soldier, no doubt, probably wondered what is going on. But he took and he took his hand and he began to lead him and he walked past the guards and directly into the room where the president stood and said dad I have a dilemma I need you to answer can I tell you God has come into this place today and if you've got a question in your mind about what needs to happen in your life God is here in this place. And can I take your hand today? And can I lead you into that uh, that office, uh, into that room, uh, and tell, show you my Father uh, who can tell you uh, what it is you need to do, uh, how it is you need to live, what it is that is going on in your life, uh, and what can uh, He can take care of, whatever that is, uh, if you will surrender your will to Him, uh, if you allow Him to walk with you. Uh, oh, would you raise your hands all across this place uh, as I open this altar? today. Oh God I love you Jesus. Would you thank him if he's given you the Holy Ghost? Would you come rejoicing? Oh God I love you Jesus. I thank you Jesus because you know a father you aren't restricted behind that gate but you can walk straight into the throne room and say God I need your help. Dad I need your help. Oh God and he knows the answers. Thank you, Jesus. He knows. Hallelujah. Job didn't Thank just stop you, with losing everything. The Bible said he, he received back a double of everything that he had. Everything that he had. Because he never surrendered to the thought pattern. If I can't go past the gate, God has made a way today. That you and I can rejoice in this place. If you have the Holy Ghost, would you raise your hands and just begin to love Him right now? Would you thank Him? If you've been able to go into that room, that throne room, and find the answer, would you raise your hands right now? Maybe it is that you're in this place and you haven't. Oh, right now, would you raise your hands and allow God to speak into your life? Uh, say, God, why don't you walk right in? Let me take your hand and uh, walk you right in uh, to that office where He's sits uh, where he's at uh, oh god i love you jesus i worship you lord uh, i praise your name god i thank you jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. i love you god i worship you jesus hallelujah
Hallelujah. There's no sense in weeping. Our Father is here in this place. And He can guide us through. There's no sense in getting worried about what's going on around us. God can lead us through. You have access to the Father. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I worship you, God. Come on, rejoice in the Lord right now. Magnify the Lord right now. Oh, has He made you glad? Has He set you free? Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise your name, God. I glorify you, Jesus. Magnify the Lord. I may not know what is going on, but that's going to give me cause to worship you even more. Because you do, God. You know, God. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. He said, I'd fill you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Ghost? Oh, why don't you thank Him for it right now? Lord Jesus, that ability, that power that's living in you to walk uh, around, uh, to walk into a situation uh, and say, I know the answer. I know the Father that can supply the need. I know the Father that can help me through it. I know the one who knows my way and my steps. And when I come through it, I'll come through it greater than what I was when I went in. Oh! going to continue to walk with him huh? would you love him right now hallelujah 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 come on this church needs to understand god has got us by the hand and as long as we're willing to walk with him huh, he will lead us it doesn't matter what's going on around us he will lead us it doesn't matter what's happening huh, around us oh god will take us to new heights and new places in him huh? but we've got to walk with him with everything we've got we've got to walk with him and we've got to rejoice huh, that he has set us free huh? he has set us free huh? oh i cannot sit still when i understand and he set me free. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I cannot allow the things of this world to influence me into thinking I can't make it. I've got to continue to listen to the voice of the Father as he begins to tell me I'm his. I'm his, and I've got you. I've got your hand. I've got you, and I'm taking you, and I'm leading you in the right path. One last time, would you love the Lord right now in this place? Thank you, Jesus, for your strength and your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for your power, Lord, in my life. God, I ask you, Lord, to continue to guide me and lead me. Don't let me be uh, overwhelmed by the things that are happening around me. But, God, let me rejoice in you. Let me rejoice in your wisdom and your strength. Let me know that I have access to walk straight into you. I don't have to be hindered, Lord, by these things that are happening in this world. But I'm free to walk in where you are at. If I need an answer, you're there. If I need a healing, you're there. If I need a strength, you're also, also there. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. You're wonderful, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're mighty, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you're wonderful, God. You're wonderful, Lord. I love you, Jesus. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.